I want you to turn tonight perhaps to one of the most, if not the most, familiar portions of the Word of God. And we're turning tonight to John's Gospel, chapter 3. The Gospel of John tonight, and we are in chapter 3. John's Gospel, chapter 3. The question I want to ask tonight is this. How can one enter the kingdom of God? That's the big question. How can one enter the kingdom of God? Well, we come this evening to John's Gospel, chapter number 3. In verse 1, we're brought to this scene, and it says, There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, our ruler of the Jews. And the same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou a master of Israel, and knowest not these things? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, We speak that we do know, and testify that we have seen, and ye receive not our witness. If I have told you earthly things, and ye believe not, how shall ye believe if I tell you of heavenly things? And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And for God, for God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. And he that believeth in Him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For every one that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. And after these things came Jesus and his disciples into the land of Judea, and there he tarried with them and baptized. And we know that the Lord will add his blessing to that public reading of his own precious truth. There is so many people tonight, so many people in this town, maybe in this tabernacle, there may be one or two, I don't know, but there's so many in this town, and there's so many in this country, and there's so many in this nation, and they're trapped. They are trapped. 
and they are trapped tonight by a false belief, by an old illusion. That works without grace is going to see them in heaven. There's so many tonight in this town, in this country, who believe, falsely believe, in a religion but the Lord of Christ, and who believe with all their heart, who wholeheartedly believe that they're going to heaven. Wonder you one of them people tonight. I was one of them. Do you know, friend, for a few days before I was saved, I wholeheartedly believed I was going to heaven. There's a whole lot of people like me this evening. Oh, I'm going to heaven because I'm a Protestant. I believed that with all my heart. I believed I was going to heaven because I was church school. I believed that with all my heart, not a shadow of a doubt. I believed I was going to heaven because I was baptized as a baby. I believed that without a shadow of a doubt. I believed I was going to heaven because I was confirmed at 13 years of age. I believed I was going to heaven without a shadow of a doubt. Oh, yes, I used to go to the dances and the discos at the weekend and acted the idiot throughout the week. But let me tell you this, friend, without a shadow of a doubt, because I was baptized, because I was confirmed, because I went to my church every Sunday, and because I'd done this and the other thing, I believed wholeheartedly, without a shadow of a doubt, if I was to die, I'd be in heaven. I'll tell you now, friend, if I had died before the 26th of August, 1985, I'd be in the fires of hell. I'd be in the fires of hell. And how many, friend, how many people are trapped by that false illusion that you can be saved by your works without grace and that you can get to heaven through religion without Christ. And I'll tell you, friend, tonight, that false belief, that illusion, is from the very pit of hell this evening. How can one, how can one tonight enter into the kingdom of heaven? How can one enter into the kingdom of God? You know, friends, this evening, let me tell you this. It's only by the Holy Spirit will such be awakened to the error of their way. I was reading in the newspaper the other day, and this boy wrote in a column, all religions lead to heaven. All religions. I'll tell you, all religions don't lead to heaven. All religions lead to hell. All religions lead to hell, you know. Christ is the way to have. And my dear friend tonight, if you're in this meeting, and you believe, and with all your heart you're going to heaven, without Christ, you're wrong. If you believe you're going to heaven because you were baptized when you were a baby, you're wrong. If you believe you're going to heaven because you were confirmed, you're wrong. And God's truth tonight tells you you're wrong. You see, here in John's Gospel, chapter 3 tonight, we're coming to a man tonight called Nicodemus. Nicodemus wasn't a heathen. Nicodemus tonight was a religious man. He was a ruler of the Jews. If there ever was a man religious, it was him. But let me tell you something about Nicodemus tonight. Nicodemus tonight was a man who stands out like the people of the north of Ireland. Your friend tonight, he was deeply religious. Nicodemus believed in God. Nicodemus believed that Christ came from God. But even knowing all these things tonight, dear unsaved friend, that didn't make him a Christian. 
That didn't seal his place in the kingdom of God. That didn't set him up for heaven, even though he believed in God. I'll tell you, friends, this evening, many an IRA man believed in God. He wasn't a Christian. And tonight, you believe in God. You believe that the Lord Jesus Christ came from God. You believe all this tonight. Ah, but that doesn't mean you're a Christian. The same problem lies in the hearts of people today. They believe so many things, but they cannot accept the truth. They believe so many things, but they won't accept the truth. But here we have this man called Nicodemus, this religious, this upright man, who believed in God, who believed in the Lord Jesus. And we read in our story this evening, he came to Jesus by night. And every time you read about Nicodemus in the Gospel of John, two other times he's mentioned. He's mentioned when Christ was being accused, and he stood up for Christ. He wasn't afraid to open his mouth for Christ. And the second time you'll find Nicodemus, you'll find him at the garden tomb. When they're bringing the body down from the cross, he came with all the perfumes to anoint the body. But every time Nicodemus is mentioned, this stamp is upon his knee. Who came to Jesus by night. Who came to Jesus by night. That's the stamp on his name. Every time he's mentioned, he came to Jesus by night. He came to Jesus by night. Why did he come to him by night? Was he, was he ashamed that others might see him? Was he afraid that others might talk about him? I believe he came to Jesus by night because he was convicted. Many a heart and many a soul is troubled at night, you know. You know, that's what we read in the book of Job 33. When deep sleep falleth upon man, slumberings upon the bed, then he openeth the ears of men and sealeth their instruction. But here's the question tonight. How can one enter into the kingdom of, of God? How can one enter into the kingdom of heaven? That's the question. Well, my text this evening answers that question. And my text tonight blows completely out of the existence all the false notions that people have. My text this evening is John's Gospel, and it's chapter 3, and it's verse 3. Verse 3, listen to it. John 3 and verse 3. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. That's the text. Do you know what that text tells me tonight? Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God, never mind enter it. Cannot see it. Never mind enter it. And that's my text tonight. Except a man be born again. Except a man be born again. Born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Sinner friend, this evening, except you be born again. You cannot see the kingdom of God, never mind enter it. Oh, except a man be born again. Ye must be born again. That's the first two words of that text. Ye must. Ye must. It doesn't say you should. It says ye must be born again. It doesn't say ye can be born again. It says you must be born again. You must be born again, or you'll never see the kingdom of God. Listen to your own, say, friend. You must be born again, or you'll never be in heaven. You'll never be in heaven. You may say to me, Abba George, I live a good life. That's what Jesus didn't say. He says, you must be born again. You may say to me, well, George, I'm an upright person. That's what the Lord Jesus doesn't say. He says, you must be born again. 
You may say to me, George, I'm a religious person. Ah, oh, no good, friend. You must be born again. And that's not Baptist talk. That's not brethren talk. That's the Lord Jesus' language. That's his word. You must be born again. For except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of heaven. You know, friend, you, here's the $60 million question tonight. How, what did the Lord Jesus mean by being born again? You know, there's no point in asking the question if I can't answer it. What did he mean about being born again? Well, the Lord Jesus was the simplest preacher ever walked this earth. He talked the everyday talk. Sure, he talked about the sheep that was lost. He talked about the coin that was lost. Sure, the Lord Jesus preached in a language that people could understand. Well, here to Nicodemus, this religious man, he uses, he uses the second birth. He uses birth. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Well, every one of us ex has experienced the first birth. If you haven't experienced the first birth, well, then you shouldn't be sitting there. Every one of us has experienced the first birth. Well, you see, the first birth is all to do with the flesh. You weren't born of God. You were born of the flesh. And the Lord Jesus says, that which is born of the flesh shall die. And you know, friends, this evening you and I have been born into an earthly family. But here's the problem. Psalm 51 verse 5 says, Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. You know, every time there's a little baby brought up to the front, bless them, and they're in their mother's arms, and I look down upon them when they're cooing and they're cuddling if they're not sleeping or crying. But you know, that little innocent baby as it's there, beautiful as it is, inside that little baby, there's a little seed, and it's called sin. Sin. And when one is born of the flesh, sin is there. As by one man sin entered the world, sin. Doesn't matter what weight you were born. Doesn't matter how good-looking you were born. You know, sometimes I hear ladies especially talking about newborn babies. Ach, look at it. It's got his mommy's fingers. It's got his daddy's toes. It's got its granny's eyes. It's got its granda's nose. He says to myself, is there any part of this baby belongs to itself? But that's born of the flesh, friend. And every little baby that's born is born a sinner. Born in sin. You ever teach a bird how to build a nest? No, you didn't have to do that. Why? Because it's in its nature. Do you ever teach a dog how to bury a bone? No. Why? Because it's in its nature. Listen, mommy, had you ever to teach that wee one of yours to tell a lie? No, you didn't. Because it's in its nature. The Bible says, For there is no man that sinneth not. That's First Kings 8, verse 46. Notice what the Lord Jesus quotes. Except a man be born again. Again! He cannot see the kingdom of heaven. No matter how righteous, no matter how religious, you must be born again. You must be born again. How does one be born again? Well, you're born from above. That's how you're born again. You see, friend, this evening, a man and a woman is born into an earthly family. That's being born of the flesh. But to be born again is to be born of the Spirit of God and born into God's family. God's family. To be born again is to be born of the Spirit of God. 
and to be born of the Spirit of God. You need to be convicted of your sin. You need to tremble because of your sin, because your sin tonight is dragging you helplessly to the fires of hell. How does a man or a woman or a young person be born from above? Well, it's not through religion. It's not through good works. It's not through any self-effort. Effort. It's when the Spirit of the living God takes a dealing with your heart. It's when the Spirit of God takes a dealing with your soul. It's when the Spirit of God takes a dealing with your mind, sir. And that's what it means. And I can tell you when the Spirit of God gets a hold of a man, he's troubled. When the Spirit of God gets a hold of a woman, she's troubled. Sin troubles you. Troubled me. And when the Spirit of God starts to work, you begin to realize what you are in the face of God. But you realize too, friend, what Christ and His love has done for you. Friend, do you realize tonight what Christ and His love has done for you? How He went to the cross, how He was crucified there to the cross, how He hung naked upon the cross, how He took your sin upon Him there on the cross, how He suffered there on the cross, how He bled there on the cross, how He died there on the cross Himself for me. Every sinner must recognize their sin. You'll never be born again if you don't. But every sinner must recognize tonight that Christ went to the cross to die for them. You see, neither is there salvation in any other, for there's none other name under heaven given amongst men whereby we must be saved. That's it. Did the Lord Jesus not say to Joseph, Thou shalt call his name Jesus? Why? Because he shall save. That's what he came to do. He didn't come to start a religion. He came to save. Glory to God, he came to save. Oh, yes. And my friend, to be born from above means to come as a poor sinner, you know and recognize that you're not prepared to meet God, and you need to realize you're not prepared to die. You need to come realizing you're not prepared for eternity. That's how you come. You come as a lost sinner. And to whom you come? You come to Christ. And you come believing with all your heart that He died on that cross for you and that his blood was shed for you, and that he died there, and he was buried, but he rose again the third day and tonight. You must accept him into your heart as your Savior. You need to be born from above. You need to trust him tonight as your Savior. The night I got saved, you know, I was gloriously saved, and thank God I was eternally saved. On Monday night, the 26th of August, 1985, that night, friend, I came as a sinner to Jesus, not as a Protestant. I came as a sinner to Jesus. And that night, about half past ten, twenty-five past ten, the Spirit entered. I came to Jesus as I was, weary, worn, and sad. I found in him a resting place. He has made me glad. I'm telling you, friend, when first my all I ventured on Christ's atoning blood, the Holy Spirit entered that moment, and I was born, born of God. I'll tell you, religious didn't come into me. Religion, none to do with my salvation. I was born again. That night, sitting in the Church of Ireland, Church Hall there on the main street of Ahnecloy, the Holy Spirit entered that night. And I was born of God, born again, born from above. I'll tell you, friend, this evening, do you believe what the Lord Jesus said? 
Do you believe you must be born again? If you don't, friend, you'll never see the kingdom of heaven. Never mind enter. If you're born once, you'll die twice. But if you're born twice, you'll die once. Do you know the date my, ma Do you know the date my mother registered me? My father and mother registered me. You know we have to register births. William George McConnell, born the 18th of August, 19, whatever it was. And do you know, <laughs> do you know the date? Do you know the date she signed my registration on? The 26th of August, 1980, sorry, 1960, whatever it was. 1965. And 20 years later, right to the very day, the heavenly register was, my name was placed in the heavenly register. When? The 26th of August, 20 years to the very day. The 26th of August, I was registered on earth. Glory to God. 20 years later, on the 26th of August, I was registered in heaven. And I'm telling you, my name's written in the Lamb's book of life because I was born again of the Holy Spirit. I'm now a child of God. And friend, ye must be born again. But you must be born anew. That's what it means to be born again, to be born from above, but you have to be born anew. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17. If any man's in Christ, he's a new creature. I'll tell you, friend, you don't see any explosions about Nicodemus getting saved. Somebody said to me, and there's no record of him getting saved. You don't see him fallen to Christ. You don't see him, you don't see a dying thief conversion. You don't even re really, you don't even seek, see Nicodemus in the Bible asking the Lord Jesus into his heart, not like the dying thief. But I'll tell you, he was born again, or right? Because later on in his life, he stood for Christ against his own people. He was at the garden. He was at the day of Calvary. He was there with the ointments to anoint the body. Oh, Nicodemus was born again. You need to be born again. Because I'll tell you this, to be born again means to be born from above, and it means to be born in you. And I mean, the night after I got saved, I come home and sat at the tea table with my mother, and I never opened my mouth. And she says to me, have you got saved? He says, who told you? My mother was crafty, you know, like her son. He says, who told ye? says, nobody had to tell me. I just noticed the cursing has stopped. When you're born again, I'll tell you, not only will you know, others will know. And I'll tell you, Nicodemus is in the kingdom of heaven tonight because he was born again. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. How can one enter the kingdom of God? How can one enter the kingdom of heaven? Being born again by the Spirit of God. Except a man be born again, he cannot see, never may not, the kingdom of God. Dear unsaved friend, ye must be born again. Let's pray. Friend, tonight, you need Christ. Let go of any old thing you're holding on to. Get Christ tonight. Trust Him. He's the only Savior. If you're clinging on to your church, you'll perish. If you're clinging on to some sacrament, you'll perish. Christ is the only one that can see you. If you're troubled tonight, will you come and see me? I can't save you, but I'll certainly help you. May God, by His grace and by the power of God, the Holy Spirit, help you tonight to be that person in being born.
born again. Lord, tonight we turn the eternal issues of this meeting over to Thee. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. 118 is